Hey everyone, Sean here at Colorado RV Center on a beautiful November day here in South Fork, Colorado. I've got behind me here the Explore X195. This is Imperial's new offering. This is their larger Explore. Behind it over there, I've got the 145, but right now we're gonna focus on this big one. And we're gonna do a tow test with it. I get asked all the time, how will my half ton pull an Explore? Can my half ton pull an Explore? Because at 5,500 pounds dry, you know, it's it could be up there when it's loaded. So we're just gonna try it. So what I've got here is a half ton. This is a 2021 Ram 1500. This is a Laramie trim. This one is the 5.7 Hemi with e-torque. And this one though is the 321 gearing. So this is more of a highway geared truck. Uh, you can get them optional with the 392 gearing, which raises your tow capacity substantially. But what's cool about this one is this is the more standard 321 gears. And that makes my tow capacity only 8,100 pounds per Rams website for a crew cab, five and a half foot box, four wheel drive, Laramie uh, truck. So at only 8,100 pounds with a 5,500 pound dry trailer, we're, we're kind of pushing it, you know, uh, especially at this elevation. So we're here at 8,200 feet elevation and everything you read online, they'll tell you you lose 3% per thousand feet. And you can certainly tell uh, on a naturally aspirated gas engine so that's why I wanted to try a tow test with this one, just to get an idea of how this one will pull it. So we're gonna take it up Wolf Creek Pass. We're gonna go find, you know, 10,000, 11,000 feet of a mountain pass to just go see how well this half ton actually pulls. So that way you can make an informed decision before you overload your half ton or overwork your half ton and have a frustrating towing experience. So the first thing we're gonna check is how much the truck squats. Imperial trailers have been known to be about 10% on the tongue. So a 5,500 pound trailer like this, we anticipate about 550 pounds on the tongue, maybe 600, depending on propane, cargo, stuff like that. And Ram trucks are notorious for squatting very easily because of the coil spring rear suspension. They ride incredibly smooth, but they do take that weight very, very easily on the, on the back end. So what we'll do is we'll drop it, we'll measure beforehand, and then we'll drop it and uh, take two measurements. Let's see where we're at. So we're starting here at 39 inches to the fender flare. And let's crank it down. This is normally the way to crank a jack up, but being from down under, it's backwards. So we're starting at 39 inches. Let's see where it goes. More weight on the jack. So we're now at just a hair under 37 inches. So we only had about two inches of squat there. Not too bad for such a big trailer. Uh, not too bad at all. And now the truck is supporting all the weight. As you can see, I've got the trailer sitting pretty close to level. I've got the rise on the hitch right there. But the trailer is sitting pretty level on the truck. Truck looks like it's squatting a little bit. My lot is downward angled just a little bit that whole way. But uh, it's sitting pretty good on the truck now. And that's with the trailer all the way up. So this does have the air suspension on it. So we can lower it and raise it as we want to if we need to get a desirable ride height. But that looks about perfect. I think what I know what time it is, it's time to hit the mountains. Let's go see how this thing does. All right, we've got the new Explore 195 pulling behind our little Dodge half ton here. We're gonna first go through the beautiful town of South Fork on our way up Wolf Creek Pass. Do you notice the flags are waving? It's supposed to blow 20 to 30 today. So in a normal acceleration, it accelerates just fine. And right here we're 8,200 feet elevation. So what a lot of people don't take into account with elevation is the amount of power you lose. So 3% per thousand feet, we're starting today at 8,000 feet elevation. So 24% down this Hemi is on power. You know, the Ford EcoBoost, maybe not because they have the turbos on them, but think about the naturally aspirated, the five liter Ford, the, the 6.2 GMC, the 5.3 GMC, you know, the other 5.7 Dodges. Even the big F-250s with the gas engine are, of course, going to suffer just like this truck will. 
and a lot of people don't take that into account when they're talking about their tow capacity so this truck being 8100 pounds only but we're down 24 percent on power so that's why it's cool to see this we'll go up wolf creek we'll see exactly how the truck performs because this trailer is only a 5500 pound trailer here um and that's dry so by, by the time all the stuff's in it we're going to add a thousand pounds uh, but when you're pulling a trailer you don't want it to be just such a taxing experience on the truck on you on anything like that so we're just going to see exactly how this does i mean it is only a you know a 20 mile stretch up there 20 miles back but it's it's a steep grade it's high elevation we're going to go up to i think wolf creek's what 10 11 000 feet we're going to find out when we get up there see a lot of people at sea level with a truck just like this with you know an 8100 pound tow capacity and they say oh I pull my 8000 pound trailer my 7500 pound trailer all over the place and oh it just pulls great no problems pulled like it's not even back there try that up here on you know not every day is going to be perfect not every day is going to be you know a tailwind or a no wind day so a test like this at high elevation on a very head windy day the winds coming from the southwest and I'm heading southwest right now, so a very headwindy day will really give you a good idea of how a, you know, a real world performance test goes at this elevation. steep grades ahead. So what I'm going to do is set the cruise control right at the speed limit at 55 and we are now going to hit the grade. I expect the truck to scream while it catches up to the speed limit as it just dropped to 51. So now it's going to catch up to 55 and we'll see how it does. We are going, the camera may not show up, but we are going up a grade now. truck seems to be doing well I mean 3,000 rpm at this elevation with this big trailer behind us on a windy day I'm pretty impressed right now I actually thought I was going to be cruising about 4,000 the whole time going up here but it seems to be doing just fine you know once it does hit 4,000 it's got plenty of acceleration and we're going to flatten off again right here
section. It's holding its speed just fine. Try to get a better idea for how quick we're going up in elevation here. You can feel the wind for sure. This headwind is for sure pushing, working against us. I can see the types of the mountains right up there. That's the that's the top of, or the beginnings, the very left side of the top of Wolf Creek Ski Area right there, which is now open for the season. It's open the first weekend in November. momentum that you thought you had not anymore it's gone because you cannot take this tunnel I mean I feel like I'm taking it fast at 35 right now so then you lose all your momentum and you still have a mile before you get to the top see now we're got plenty of plenty of throttle to be able to get this thing to the top There's Wolf Creek Ski Area right there. All along this mountain right here is the Wolf Creek Ski Area. You can see the lift going up right, right here. Got the moguls over here on this side. And we're able to accelerate. We're at 3,500. We're still accelerating up this hill right here. We're not giving it all the throttle it has. I don't need to accelerate too fast because I do have another curve coming up. What do you see some people skiing down here? Beautiful day to be doing it. And now the final turn before the top of Wolf Creek Pass. And it's a 45 mile an hour speed limit. And we're gonna do this at 45 right here. Actually, we're doing it at 48. No problem at all. to 2500 it was kind of holding its speed there for a second but I accidentally hit the throttle a little more gave it a little more speed and we are approaching the top of Wolf Creek Pass beautiful area right here you can see some snowmobile tracks Chris Barant and Matt Ince up here riding this last week when we got 20 inches of snow. Oh my gosh. Why can't the views be better? <laughs> and we're going to pull off the side here and take a look at how high up we really are. We are Wolf Creek Pass, 10,856 feet up. Let's see how it did as far as temperature went here. Coolant temp, 219. Trans temp, 181. Perfect. Oil temp, 258 right there in the middle. This thing did just excellent going up the hill. Let's take a look. We got the Explorer now at the top of Wolf Creek Pass. All right, let's start our descent down Wolf Creek. Let's see how it goes here. You know, we made it up easily no problem 
we're gonna try to figure out which gear the truck likes to keep us slow so there's fourth gear fourth gear is you know keeping us nothing not doing really anything let's be honest third gear just kicked us up just a little bit third gears trying to hold us let's try second oh there we go so second gear will keep this thing held back a little bit so well I'm impressed you know with that really long tongue on it really gets the axles back a little bit gives a little bit more tongue weight and just makes it pull beautifully I think what we'll do is we'll try to kick the wheel over a little bit and see how it does see it just tracks straight back there's no traffic coming so we're still going we're going 55 we're about to hit the tunnel oh there's a car but even when you try to swing it a little bit Look at that, it just goes right back into play. No issue at all. thoughts on this trailer is even a half ton with 321 gears the low towing capacity like this truck has plenty it's great it does great even at high elevation now I know I am unloaded so I'm gonna have you know a thousand pounds worth of stuff in here um, when when I it is actually time to go camping between the water and all my pots pans linens all that good stuff but even adding a thousand pounds the truck was never low on power it never felt unsafe it pulled it great even on a windy day uh, it still pulled it great uh, uphill at 10,800 feet elevation and not everybody's pulling them at 10,800 feet elevation I mean if you're pulling it through Arizona or Utah you're at a lower elevation even through a lot of Colorado's even a lower elevation than that but it's good to know that even through these big mountains uh, through these steep grades, these winding hills with no air on a windy day, that this truck still had plenty of juice left in it. Uh, did not have any issue doing it. Um, and here when I get to flat ground here in just a little bit, we'll see that the truck just has no issue at all, even on flat ground. So that's 
that's awesome that's good to know because one of the bigger questions that we get is can my half ton pull a bigger explore trailer well I've never tried it so anything that I've told a customer before has just been off of you know my customers experiences but now that I've tried it I've recorded it now we kind of know how it'll do and I'm happy to say that it does great so it's easy to recommend a half ton with one of these explorers now so that'll conclude the tow test I appreciate everybody watching this video and uh, keep keep up with all of our content that we're going to be putting out on these explorers here in the near future we've got some media companies we're working with to make sure we bring you the best content uh, with really the best trailers that we can find the best off-roading trailers in the most capable off-roading trailers and we're right here in Colorado so we can really put them to the test right here at the base of Wolf Creek Pass and really show you what these trailers are made of not just the explorers but any of the trailers that we carry the Mission Overlands the Palomino Pauses the Winnebago Micro Minis I mean everything that we carry we'd love to show you but I want to do the Explorer in particular because so many times the question is can my half ton pull it so I hope you really enjoyed this video and I look forward to talking to you guys any more in the future